This is Tiger Woods. Tiger Woods is a cat in our city here. He's part of the community of the cats in Basel and also part of the community of the people who love cats in our city. And Tiger Woods got lost about four weeks ago. And Tiger Woods plays a role in the story I'm going to tell you, which is about something completely different than cats. I mean, God be well, I'm not going to talk about cats here. I'm going to talk to you about urban development. And more precisely, I would like to talk about digital urban development and about the way how we can achieve more sustainable cities by shaping the digital space in our cities. And as the overall theme of this TEDx talk here is past, present and the future, I thought it's a good idea to talk about the past, present and the future of a specific area in our city. Namely, this corner here, which is called the Erlen Mott area. Some of you may know, until 1998, this has been a very large cargo site. Deutsche Bahn loaded and unloaded their, their cargo, and then they decided to move out logistics operations out of the city. And all of a sudden, the city had the chance to develop a totally new neighborhood there. It's the largest area in the city that could have been developed at that time. And the city came in and they said, yes, that's where we're going to do something. And we're not going to do like a standard neighborhood. We're going to do a light tower project. It's a sustainable neighborhood they wanted to build up. And in Swiss terms, it's a so-called 2,000 watts area um, development project. That was about 15 years ago. And of course, it's a long and complex process. Um, I'm a geographer from education, at least in parts. And I would like to take you in the way how we look at this kind of uh, development projects. Geographers just tend to slice the space, to slice the space in different layers to understand what happens in such a complex process. So for example, you have maybe like the underground. So there may be poisonous um, areas and you have to reestablish something before you can even start to think about what you're going to do in that area. And then you're going to talk a lot about usage patterns how much residential areas versus recreational areas? Is there historic sites you want to preserve? How much offices versus shopping, etc., etc.? And there may be an additional layer, um, let's call it like the buildings layers. If you're heading for a sustainable neighborhood, of course, the efficiency, for example, the energy efficiency of buildings or the gray energy that is built into buildings is important. And it goes on, there may be a traffic layer. By layering, by dividing a space into different layers, you can reduce the complexity, you can start to understand what happens. And there may be other layers, ecosystem layers, and so on. Um, it helps you to see what happens in detail. And it also helps you to see how this neighborhood evolves. So let's combine these layers again together. This here shows the residential area, so all of the parts here, that's where people are going to live. Uh, this is a mixed usage building, shopping center, hotels, etc. These are the recreational areas, parks and the like. And here is a small historic site, those of you who may know it, it's like the restaurant barn cantine, and there is an office building that's going to come up. I think it's Fossil um, who is going to be there, so the former company of uh, our colleague who talked about watches and traffic, etc., etc. And here you see the, the buildings. And now if you go on, we see what has evolved so far. The white buildings are still to be built, and the other ones are already in the course of uh, being built or handed over. The big, large, like, U-style building here is to be finalized this year. The first people moved in. That's about 1,200 people who are going to live in that area up left. If you step back a little bit and you think about, okay, this is now a sustainable city. This is what we see if we talk about sustainable cities. Then you remark one thing, it's very physical. It's about the buildings, it's about the space. So urban planning today is about a lot about shaping the physical space, very obviously. However, it's the people who move in, and it's the people who do something with the energy and consume energy, and not, do not consume energy, or it's the people who re, um, use resources, or it's the people who interact with other people who are going to define in the end how sustainable this area is going to be. So while from today's point of view, we look at the past from the construction phase, what is more important in the future is how the people are going to and behave in that area. And about one year ago, something very interesting happened. The people who built this building, they came to us and they said, we would like to bridge 
the barrier between the construction phase and the phase where people are going to live in. We would like to support the people who live in that area also to achieve a sustainable lifestyle. We would like to bridge the barrier between the past and the present. And it coincided well because I'm also an information scientist and I did a lot of research of how to combine digital services with, with physical objects at ETH Zurich at that time. And then we started to think about with these people who are more in the construction business. And we started to think about what would be cool user stories um, that we could apply into that area. So take this couple as an example. They moved into that area. And imagine they just walk around in their apartment. They push on the, on the light uh, button. And the light bu button tells them, oh, cool, you're back here again. You know, like last month you consumed 2% less energy than the month before, but still you're like 5% above the average of the whole residential area. So here are some tips for you. That might be a use case, wouldn't it? Or here is the guy who's uh, doing something that's quite obvious if you're moving in. And imagine the wall is telling him, most probably the next thing you want to have is like a drill, because you have to make like a hole. Um, so here's a list of the people who have drills in your um, apartment and would be able to, to borrow you the drill. Or the window is telling the guy, feel a little bit alone. It's, it, it's very normal, by the way. I mean, it's 1,200 people who moved in. There is no social structure so far, but there are four people in the area who would be interested in creating kind of a residential area party. And if you would like to take part just to overcome the anonymization here, then feel free and join our group. Or the table could tell them pizza is good, but you know there's also bio food from a farmer around the corner. <laughs> or the washing machine could tell them, if you have any questions, just uh, uh, go to my digital documentation, as everything is documented digitally in that area. So these are some of the stories, and you, you may, you may um, uh, think about other stories, but it's obvious that you can go from a sustainability view much more into the life cycle of, a, of an area and of a building than only defining the energy efficiency of, a, of a buildings. What we then found out, is, uh, for, for our own surprise, is that we can arrange that way of thinking about uh, how to attach these services in the very same way. So while we have been thinking about physical layers so far, which uh, describe the development of that area, we can add also digital layers to that physical space. So we can add like a real-time energy monitoring layer. We can add a local social community function that people can uh, communicate amongst each other or sharing functionalities for things some of the stories you have just been talking about or digital communication functionalities between tenants and authorities, et cetera, et cetera. While planning for a sustainable city so far was shaping the physical space, today we think um, it's possible to shape also the digital space. And it's very simple. We just took these layers and we transformed the layers into that format of tiles and then we put it into the frame which everybody has in his pocket or in his trouser today. And the story, in fact, is today people who are moving in into that area, they not only get the key as like the access uh, to the physical world of their apartment, they also get the access code to the application of their apartment and of their neighborhood. Covering essentially about everything that is uh, relevant um, from a sustainability point of view, documentation, services um, in that new area. Does it work? Of course, I mean, it was kind of an experiment for us too. We were not sure if people are going to adopt that um, kind of technology. But 84% of the people who moved in loaded the application on day number one and signed up, 84%. So if you talk to an app developer and you tell him you get like 84% of your target group in the first, on the first day, then everybody is very happy. And so were we too. Um, but this is only one part of the medal. The other part is, are they also going to use it um, sustainably? Or are, they, are they going back to the application? And today we know they use it about every second day. And the reason why they use it every second day is, is, is because it's a combination of different services that we have put into that application. It's the density, it's the, the, the combination of the layers that makes it interesting to go back. You see a very concrete case here. This is our Tiger Woods. Tiger Woods got lost exactly in that area. And instead of gluing all these A4 papers, like my cat has got lost and so on, uh, the lady here just uh, informed everybody that uh, the cat got lost. Unfortunately, he hasn't been found so far, still not. 
But this also leads me to the future. What we have seen is, in the past, planning is something physical. Now we know there is a new space we could design from a city point of view. But we've only done it so far in one specific area. Now let's think about what would happen if we go broader, if we're not only working in a very specific area and in like these 500 or 600 apartments there in that area we've just equipped with that kind of application. But we go for the whole city. What could it be? What could be like the, the digital layers we just could glue onto, onto a city? I'll give you some examples. There may be a repair layer, a repair layer that helps you find the people who re repair some stuff. And you may say, okay, but there are that kind of services. That's right. The problem of many of those services is that you use them very, very seldomly. And the day you want to use it, you have forgotten it that they exist. So if there would be like a chance to com combine such kind of services into one application, that might be probably very interesting for many people. Another layer may be an environmental data layer. If we talk about smart cities, then it's, there's a lot about their sensors, uh, monitoring pollen, etc. So this data may be, may be here, but it's not so super accessible for people. There may be also like um, people who start their own movements, an urban gardening movement layer, for example. I'm just giving you some examples. A local events calendar in that corner of the city, you have like the suit and so on. They are most probably very happy if they get a communication layer for the whole area they are living in. A history layer, I'm just uh, fantasizing here. A service marketplace, a sharing layer for stuff um, people want to share. And of course, very important, the lost cats layer, because this one is still missing. And so on, it goes on. See, they may like um, distribute it in a very, very um, uneven um, way. What we know today is, in the city, there are people who are responsible for sustainable development. We have locally many people who um, develop kind of an engagement. They have like their um, small associations. They would be very happy if they could just connect themselves to such kind of a, uh, an IT infrastructure. And we have the people from whom we know that they are interested in having locally bound services. So the only thing that is missing today is the infrastructure in a city that is just doing nothing else than say, you are here, and the relevant services for you in your neighborhood are those services. So just choose what services you want like to have, and then you get like uh, a dynamic um, neighborhood application framework. We invest billions in physical infrastructure, in traffic, in buildings, in tunnels, whatever. We invest almost nothing in digital infrastructure in cities. And we know that most of the people are using that kind of um, infrastructure. So that's the reason why we think something like this will evolve. And it may sound a little bit abstract, of course, we're not working on that right now. But for one reason, for sure, we know that something like this has to happen. And that's, again, Tiger Woods because he hasn't been found. And he may not be found until this last cat's layer comes up. That was my conversation. Enjoy the rest. <laughs>